Welcome. This is Ty Mitchell, my sometime nemesis. All time nemesis. And interview guest. Longtime resident, a guy who's got a lot of stories to tell. We'll probably get like one fifth of them. Okay, Ty Mitchell. Uh, where to even begin with you? I'll tell you this, man. When I first met you, Padres had just been built and had this uh, steel exoskeleton. And I thought, that's got to be the most amazing thing I've seen in this building. It must have taken forever to do that. And someone said, no, look at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> the bar is just like drove this guy crazy. And they pointed to you. So I know you do a lot of stuff. We'll get to whatever we can. But when I came to town, you were a builder. You were a contractor, but kind of in an artistic way, right? Yeah. You know, I've, I've contracted all over the South and had my own company. And, I, I you know... I needed a, a different challenge. You know, I got, I got burnt out on regular new construction and standard construction. And so I did a lot of Adobe work out here and a lot of, uh, you know, restoring buildings that could have very easily collapsed to the ground during construction because it was a challenge and it was fun. And I did that. And, you know, it was time for me to move on from construction. It was just, well, you, I'm sure you did construction, but when you did that bar, by that time, you were doing stuff that kind of bordered on artistic or at least craft stuff, right? Yeah. I like, uh, you know, anybody can build an, a new home, you know, so I like to push, Which push is true. outside. Well, as long as we're getting into that, I remember talking to you once about architects and I, and I'm a guy who loves building, um, I always thought that architects, especially when it comes to residences, were the least important guy on the job. And I know you, you told me once that a good, a good builder can just have it on a napkin and make it from there. Sure. Um, the last house I built here in, in uh, Marfa was a burnt down adobe, and, and we did it off a napkin that just kept growing and growing. Uh, but, you know, I mean, the contractor works directly with the money. Mm -hmm. The architect does it. He can have a budget, but he doesn't really care. And it, <coughs> contractor can save you money over here on the left side that you can spend on the right side. You know, if you've got a hundred thousand dollars budgeted, you can. You know, the contractor can save you money in these areas where you can put more in the comfort things that you want. I know you as a contractor. Everyone else in the world knows you as a cowboy. And I'm not going to even ask you the question everyone asks you. They say, are you a real cowboy? <laughs> because I'll, I'll answer it for you. Uh, you, you. And the reason they ask you that, by the way, is because they see you in a city. But when you're not in a city, I know a lot of times you're actually on a ranch and you're working for someone like uh, managing their grass. As I've learned here in West Texas, managing grass is another way of saying managing cattle. Yep. When did you start doing that? All my life. You know, I've always... Uh, <clears throat> When I need to take a break from whatever I was doing, uh, as soon as I got home from the military, <coughs> I uh, when I got home from the military, I cowboyed for quite a while before I did anything else. Are you Texan? And what's that? Are you Texan? I am actually a Texan. I was born in Raton, New Mexico, but Ann Richards certified me and gave me the paperwork, and I am a registered Texan. You're saying uh, symbolically, or did you actually? No, meet Ann her? Richards. I mean, she had a driver deliver, hand deliver to me <laughs> a big certificate. Well, go ahead. Why? Well, I knew Ann Richards mm -hmm. when she, I got to know her right at the end of her term as head of the highway department. And the guys at the highway department really didn't like her because she really pushed them hard. Did you work in some capacity? When I, when I, yeah, I'd, I'd uh, started getting involved in politics mm -hmm. and, and in Texas budget and things like that, because this is my state, and I'm, you know. And I just got to meeting her and in, in, at different venues and things. And uh, so she was giving a speech to one of the highway department offices. She went to all of them, and she'd talk to all the guys, and she'd usually have the talk out in the garage or the warehouse or the highway department shop where they could all fit. And, and the highway department guys didn't like her a whole lot because she was pretty demanding. And... Uh, there was one time she went and there was an old mangy dog in there. It just looked like crap, but it was the shop dog. You know, it was an old stray. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was standing up there and she said, everybody was sitting there. And she said, uh, 
you uh you got a shop dog I see here and he's just an ugly dog and I said uh what's somebody find dog what's the dog's name and he's just dead silence in there and finally this old guy stood up and he wasn't scared of getting fired and he said oh we named the bitch Ann Richards <laughs> <laughs> and this young kid jumped up, didn't want to lose his job, and he said, yeah, but we call her Miss Ann. <laughs> so I called her Miss Ann from then on. And uh, when she was running for governor, and this is one of the, one of the things I loved about her, she she knew I was going to vote for Clayton Williams. And, I mean, she was a pistol, and I loved her. Uh-huh. loved her to death. And one reason I did love her is she knew I was voting for Clayton. And it didn't bother. And I helped her on her campaign, even. Hmm. Because she is a good person. And, yeah. and it wasn't a personal thing. If my vote was going for Clayton, and I hope Clayton would win, she knew it, and she was strong enough to not let that come between us. And she, she's a good businesswoman. She knew it was, it was an asset to have people on both sides. And she asked me to give a speech one time, you know, just kind of a little speech at a, at a gathering when she was running for governor, or right after she'd become governor, excuse me. And... So I stood up and then told some stories, and, and uh, we talked. And the way she introduced me was she said, now, folks, I want to introduce you to a man that is Texas. He is personifies Texas. He is everything Texas. He is a true Texan, a true Texas man, blah, blah, blah. And I was just a big old kid, really. I was pretty young. And, <laughs> and uh, I got up there on the podium. I said, well, Miss Ann, I said, that's, that's mighty nice. That's you know, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Except, uh, I'm not a Texan. I was born in Raton, New Mexico. <laughs> and the next day at my house, this guy knocks on the door and there's a Texas flag folded three cornered that had flown over the Capitol. Of course, an autographed picture of Ann Richards and a certificate that it made me a Texan. And it is, went signed and sealed by the governor's so office. It's, it's official. Signed by her. Yeah. And a book on how to fly the Texas flag and what else she had in that bag. She had a bunch of crap. And as soon as that guy walked out the door, mm-hmm. my phone rang and I answered it and it was her. And she said, <laughs> By God, Ty, next time I introduce you as a Texan, you're a goddamn Texan. <laughs> I said, Okay. Well, I forgot how we got on. Uh, no, I was asking you about uh, Cowboy, but I, now I want to ask you about something else. Were you ever considering running for office or have you ever? No, um, I don't. I don't think I'd be a, a a good good man in in almost any office because everything I've got is just common sense, and and there just ain't no room for common sense because mm-hmm. common sense will get you thrown in jail. Hmm. You know, I mean, if I was the mayor of Marfa, I could very easily make a mistake that would be criminal. Are considered criminal, and I'm not. Well, let me interrupt. I want to say that what you say is true. I could see you as a mayor uh, getting thrown in jail <laughs> mm-hmm. for some. But here's here's something you're overlooking. I could see also that if you ran, you would win. You know, I'd I love to because I love giving back to the community. I really, I really feel strongly about that, and I, I, you know, I, I hope the more people who feel that way, the better the community is. And you do things in the community that don't necessarily benefit you. They don't need to benefit you. As long as they benefit something in the community, it eventually comes back to you. And if you have a business, you know, it's my business is struggling, but every time I get a couple hundred bucks, I can put towards something that's going on that, that that's uh, creative in the, in the town and helps the town. Um, you know, man, I'm there. I'm, I'm for it. I really want to do it. Um, fixing to start putting on, um, uh, soapbox derby uh uh seminars for the kids here in town because kids don't have a lot to do here and i think i remember you were one of the first people helping out with the roller derby which just seemed crazy at the time and (laughs) now look at it actually happened yeah first bout was a success it was real well you you were talking about your business in my opinion your business is is miraculous it is like it is a miracle because man you have stuck it out you <laughs> have stuck it out. So what's what's the current status of it? And but let's it's called the Lost Horse Saloon. It's way down on San Antonio, towards yeah, it, the uh, Alpine side of Marfa. You know, just knowing the, that a business, um, you know, um, 
a, a very good friend of mine once said that that uh, the best fertilizer for a small business is the owner's footprints. Yeah. And I knew it was going to take at least two years of hard, diligent effort, and I knew there was a learning curve that was going to eat my lunch, and I didn't have the budget for mistakes. I knew I was going to have them. I just didn't really know how I was going to get through them without losing my business. Right. And it's been very difficult. And um, people I've owed money to have helped me out. I finally got on an even even deal, uh, you know. Uh, but yeah, I was running late on payments. I, I, you know, it was very difficult, but I just hung in there, and and it's coming back, and I'm learning what the customers want. Um, and it, how they feel comfortable. And summer favors the lost horse. It's a place that favors hanging out outside. Mm -hmm. and you've you've done a lot with that yard. So I'm 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 thinking that tour season's gonna really work for you. Yeah, you know, uh the thing is comfort. You know, people you know, especially you know, everybody, you people the tourists, the locals, everybody need you know, they want to go to a comfortable place. So every time I get two nickels I, you know, I spend it out there and try and make something nice. Why are the lights so bright on the inside? That's my complaint. Well, Has, all, am I the first person to mention that? No, one? all my lights are on dimmers. The bartenders forget to go over and dim them. Is that it? Come yep, on. That is it. Huh. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm at my wit's end on that. I like a place. I don't want people, they, to see what I look like unless they're real drunk. And at <laughs> uh, Ty's Bar, that's not always the case. Let's go Let's go back. You, I mean, there's so many stories circulating around you. Navy guy, you were a bouncer. Uh, you hung out with bad guys at some point. You were, um, did I say boxer? Did I just say uh -huh. that? Say Navy boxer, bouncer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you um, uh, had a lot of money in Enron. Mm -hmm. uh, married a couple times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, e each one of those is a conversation in itself. But the kind of the theme of that is you don't uh, you're not tied down to one thing. No, the, but you are tied down to kind of one personality for sure. Yeah. And, you know, I'm typecast, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. Uh, but life is a gift and this world is a gift. And man, just try and get everything you can out of it and, you know, and enjoy it. That's what it's here for, man. So I've, I've, you know, I've had a blessed life and I'm not saying, you know, it's been hard at times and I'm glad it was because it made me what I am. makes me appreciate what we have. Let me just dance around this stuff. You went to the Navy, you joined mm -hmm. the Navy. I'm going to guess, I'm, you, this is just totally off the top of my head, but I know the situation sometimes Were you getting in trouble in some way or other as a teenager. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, it's, so what, what was the Navy like for you? Or what, what kind of trouble were you getting in? I was fixing the, I was, uh, well, it had, you know, you know <laughs> keep so it, it clean. It had something to do <laughs> with some clean. guns that were going, you know, south of the county, uh -huh. you know, and, it, <clears throat> and uh, just, you know, yeah, I thought, I thought it was glamorous. I thought it was fun. I thought it was, you know, it was just young teenage stupid stuff. And, mm -hmm. and I, uh, you know, yeah, I was getting in too much trouble. Did police say we'd like you to join the Navy? Did your dad say that, or did no, you just think well, the this is a good way to stay alive? And the judge, <laughs> so, you know, they recommended. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how long were you in the Navy? Four years. So what I know about you in the Navy is that apparently you were a fairly good boxer. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, what weight class? You have a kind of a Thomas Hearns body. Is that the way you fought? Well, I, you know, I can change my weight. I could back then. Now, mm. you know, I'm a little older. It'd be a little tougher. But back in my 20s. I could gain weight, you know. I could go anywhere from one seventy five to two hundred. Wow! In so, how long? Know, in how I long? Could, what's that? In how long? How much time would it take you to put on twenty five pounds of, of muscle? If, if in a diligent effort, less than six weeks. Yeah. You know, uh, that's unusual. That's what snakes do when they like, you know, a cobra <laughs> eats a deer or something. Uh, how how was how good a boxer were you? Pretty good. Um, I didn't win the the fleet championship, but I also didn't get to compete as much as I want to because we were in conflict the whole time I was in, so it was really hard for me. We, when were you? This is the Gulf War? No, right before the Gulf War. We were in El Salvador, Beirut, and Libya. So huh. that pretty much took up my four years. Now, did you have any incidents in Beirut? I've heard that uh -huh. tossed around. Uh, is that anything we can talk about? Yeah. It, um, I was on the Stinger missile program, so I was on land a lot for a Navy guy. and. Uh -huh. Uh, it, you know, I wouldn't do it today. My country couldn't 
order me to do. And I'm not saying it was wrong. Mm-hmm. It's just I, I can't I can't hurt people anymore, and I can't you know I mean I can yeah. I just don't like to, and I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> you know it, it it was, you know it had to be done, and it was done, and I don't regret it, and I'm not begrudging my country or anybody. Um, war is a terrible thing, but that's why the military doesn't draft 46 year old men because yeah. we tell them no. War and marriage both favor young people because you got to be stupid enough to do both of them, you know? <laughs> exactly. Or, let me say crazy enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm guessing a, a, a military guy who has some pretty good boxing skills and has known some um, crazy times would be a good bouncer. Mm-hmm. And was that when you got to Austin? Yeah. So what was what was that like? What were you doing there? Oh, it was fun. I was... Um Working in construction and working in oil patch. Uh, you were roughneck? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, roughneck for quite a few years. And then I uh, went to operating heavy equipment, building drilling locations, and then uh, doing conservation work uh, for the Soil Conservation Office, you know, building stock tanks and landscaping. And Is that when you were friendly with Ann Richards? No, that was, that was uh, <laughs> after Ann Richards. That was after Ann mm-hmm. Richards? Just, I don't want to spend too much time on that. Tell me then what you were doing when you when you met her. Were you thinking of maybe getting into politics yourself? Maybe a little bit, but I would have had. You know, it really. I just really wanted to help. I really wasn't too much in the. I wasn't going to try and do anything on a state level. Yeah. I really just wanted to get in there and learn and and see if I could help. From the outside, without being elected official. When does West Texas come in the picture? Uh, when I was sixteen, I uh, was chasing a girl that went to college in Sol Ross, hmm. and I came out here the first time. And this is my third time living out here, and and I always knew I'd end up here. Did you marry that girl you chased to Sol Ross? No, I did not. She ended up marrying someone, <laughs> uh, another girl. <laughs> Surprise! So, you know, but we're still great friends, mm-hmm. um, and she has a successful career. What was Marfa like when you were sixteen? A whole lot different than it is now. Uh, Judd was here, but his influence wasn't quite as strong yet. Right. Um, and the town was 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 very border town like. You know, it, it was what you would think. Marvel would be like without art. It was dying. Wow. You know, she was foundering. Uh huh. And yet, I get the impression that Alpine's always been steady, kind of the same. Yeah, but they've got a college, and that helps any town. Yeah. You know. One time, I think it was Halloween at Padres, and we had a pumpkin carving contest, <laughs> and some people, like, you know, took, took knives and just started jabbing them in the pumpkin. That's what I was doing. But you were drawing something out. And a young lady uh, who I think was admiring you at the time said uh, something, oh my gosh, Ty, you can really draw. You're really an artist. Oh my gosh. And you said, well, Ty's still got a few tricks you don't know about. (laughs) Something like that. But I looked over and you actually could draw. And it showed me that, it showed me, first of all, you know, because I was just coming from California, that stereotypes don't work. They really don't work, and you don't know it until it gets slapped in your face, but you, it will happen. But the other thing is that you actually have like a certain direction. You have a certain direction you could have gone, or maybe you still do go. Were you ever an artist? Did you ever think about it? Um, I won art awards when I was a kid, mm-hmm. uh, from photography to drawing, painting, uh, sculpting. Um, you know, and, and I, I just kind of let that go by the side. Mm-hmm. Wayside, you know. Um, it must have helped in contracting, right? Sure. Oh, yeah. it helps tremendously, especially when people want something outside the box. Yeah. Um, you got to have creativity. And um, I love art and I love drawing. I mm-hmm. just, it, it, there's so many other things I love doing more. So I, I spent my time doing that. You've been married. Twice, but as mm-hmm. I understand it, maybe both of them, but at least one, you were actually living on a ranch? Uh-huh. Somewhere. Both of them. Oh, both of them? Mm-hmm. Um, so was that part of your cowboying career? Uh-huh. And that was southwest Texas? No, nope. that was uh, over in central Texas. 
One in Caldwell County and one in Bastrop County. Well, ex- explain ranching to me a bit. You want to go where there's water. You want to go where there's grass. Because mm-hmm. Southwest Texas seems like one of the worst places to be a rancher. It's the hardest, not the worst. The biggest challenge. And it that's why I came out here to Cowboy. I, you know, Central Texas, the grass is lush. You know, if a ranch is 200 acres, they really think they got them something. You mm-hmm. know, 200 acres is what we put our horse on. You know, that's our pens. Yeah. Um, out here and, and it, you know, you really got to do everything on horseback out here and there's always an element of getting hurt or worse and it's very hard and it's very difficult and you have to be on top of your game to make money for the ranch to make money that you work for. What's the career, uh, length of a guy who's working in the Southwest Texas ranch? I mean, you can't, be, you can't be doing that stuff too old. Sure you can. These guys do it till they die. I mean, they die out there on the ranch in the saddle or, or at their bunkhouse making breakfast. It's mm-hmm. the hardest because to get the same amount of uh, cattle, you need way m- much more land, and that means you got to cover that land. You can't. You got to be on a horse, and you got to. Is is that what you mean by that? Yeah. But you can. But you can still make the money out of it. Uh huh. But you're not gonna make a lot of money. So the good thing is the cowboys mm-hmm. you meet out here are doing it because they love it. They ain't doing it for the money. Yeah, but are people still kind of playing the lottery, trying to get oil off their ranches? Well, every ranch wants an oil well, but that's there's some ranches that'll never happen. You know, it's just not there. And the land's there. And as long as the land's there, there will be a cowboy sticking a cow on it. You know, that's Mm -hmm. just what we do. Are you doing that still when you're not at Lost Horse? Are you ever not at Lost Horse? Yeah, I kind of took a a two-year sabbatical. Mm-hmm. from cowboy to get this you know to give the bar it's true you know it just deserved and um but i still go when they call me they're in a bind they need some help i'll right. load up and go and then when the fires hit of course you know i was gone for three days and nights fire was a year ago and i think you said you you were called to like save save cattle right what was well i wasn't was told i just did you know i didn't you know I just, oh i thought someone i thought someone actually kind of like put up a bat signal and said listen i don't have enough people to to save these every things. rancher did that but every cowboy knew that without being told and we didn't it did we didn't go to specific places per se we just went and wherever we caught cattle or livestock or wild animals you know uh the odd dad or or whatever in a trouble or trapped we mm-hmm. went to cutting wires and using our horses and pushing them into safe places yeah and you know and you didn't care you know i i, did, I didn't get paid because i didn't work for any of these ranches up here in wild rose pass and in fort davis and didn't worry about getting but wouldn't been doing it for the pay i was doing it because i am a cowboy and at that point you know you just do what has to be done uh I want to shift gears a little bit. Okay. There are tons of different ways of being a cowboy. I was telling you about stereotypes, but the truth is when people come to this town, they, they take your picture because you look like one. <laughs> and that turned into, I think, a movie career of uh-huh. sorts and also a modeling career. And mm-hmm. also this kind of weird situation where people will just say, can you pose here? Can you pose there or whatever? It doesn't seem to bug you. No, because I've, I've traveled around the world and I'm, I realized that, and cowboys are tough, and they they seem intimidating and unapproachable. Yeah. When when you see them, you know they're very hard hard people, mm-hmm. but they're good people. It's just they you know their appearance is very intimidating, and you know if somebody wants a, to take a picture, or have a conversation, a cup of coffee or a beer, you know I ought to give them that. They've come a long way mm-hmm. to this little town to leave some of their money that they worked hard for and enjoy themselves. And they, I want people to leave my town say, man, I had a great time. And cowboys, you know, like I said, it can be intimidating. So I try not to be, and I try and accommodate them as much as I can. And then they're always grateful for it. And I love meeting people. And, you know, I was, I was a mean son of a gun most of my life. And I woke up one day, I was in my early thirties. I said, I ain't never going to be mean again. This is just, I wasted most of my life on that. What slapped you in the face to give you that? It was just the, the you, that particular night you went to sleep and you woke up different? Or? Yeah. I just, I looked back reflecting 
you know, Cowboys got a lot of time to think. And I just, hmm. I reflected on my life and, and, you know, my prejudices and my, and I, I got old enough that I realized I didn't have to be my father. I didn't have to be men that I respected. I can still respect them, but I don't have to be them. And I don't have to do the things the way they did. And, you know, I got to looking at the world and the world's problems and, and local problems and just home problems and every problem. And I said, you know, most of us out of ignorant hate and, and you know, just being mean or a bad person, I, I ain't going to do it no more. Are you or were you then a religious guy? No. But you, you sleep under the stars a lot and you see that as almost like a vacation from life in a way. Uh-huh. I mean, so it, it, there, there's got to be something – some juices flowing through you that kind of make you reflect on bigger things. Oh yeah. You know, I, I don't, I don't believe in any religion. Mm-hmm. I just don't because religion divides people. Everybody's mm-hmm. hating each other because they're of a different religion. I don't, I don't get it. Never have. And I'm not going to get it. And I'm not going to worry about it. I believe in a higher power of course, but that's, you know, I love to reflect and I love peace, you know, peaceful moments. You had this thing on your, uh, I don't know if it was a web page or a Facebook page. It was something along the lines of, I'd rather be, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm putting words in your mouth, so help me out. Like, hated for who I am than uh, liked for what I'm not. I'd rather be hated for who I am than loved for who I ain't. Yeah. Uh, now, that's something I can certainly appreciate. But I was surprised to see that on your page because I don't know anyone who's got any animosity towards you, at least not in this little 2,000-person town. Oh, there's a few people in this town. If you own a saloon, you're going to have some people that don't like you. Right. Well, so sometimes people get an easy exit, and sometimes mm-hmm. they get a hard one. <laughs> but luckily, for the most part, yeah, I'm pretty well received in town. It's it's treated me very well, and I'm very happy and fortunate. And Lost Horse will stick around? That's the plan. Good. All right, Ty. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Jason.